LL Cool J really having a torrid time here, hiding inside an oven from this angry Mako shark. <laughs> She's turned the oven on. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites, the best place online for you to get your shark fix. Yes, that's right, we're back again for another movie commentary episode here on Shark Bites and so many of you have been chuntering away in the comments since season one, suggesting this shark film for me to do. However, before we start today's film, make sure you check out our last movie commentary on The Meg by clicking this link here. I'm actually super excited to be doing a movie commentary on this film, which became somewhat of a shark pop culture phenomenon since its release back in 1999. I remember watching this film as a kid and it definitely scared the hell out of seven-year-old me. <laughs> as always, a pre-warning, this film does contain blood and gore and this episode is going to have spoilers for the film. So if you don't want either of those things, make sure you switch off now. So, without further ado, grab yourselves a drink, put your feet up, and enjoy this movie commentary of Deep Blue Sea with a real-life shark scientist. So, we're flying into Aquatica Research Station here, situated a number of miles off the coast of California, I think, out in the open ocean. We can see some big sea pens here which I'm pretty sure have sharks in. So we do occasionally keep juvenile sharks in shallow water pens for early behavioural studies before releasing them back out into the ocean but we don't have massive deep sea pens containing sharks like this out in the middle of the ocean <laughs> miles away from anything. Supposedly we've got a tiger shark here being moved in a cradle. <laughs> I think this is probably the worst depiction of a tiger shark that I have ever seen. They've literally taken their giant animatronic Mako sharks, slapped some orange stripes on its back and called it a tiger shark. <laughs> Buff guy Carter decides here he's going to jump into the water with the shark to try and get a number plate out of its mouth. As you do, I guess. So he's only wearing board shorts, gloves and a pair of fins here. The rest of him is completely bare skinned which would normally be getting absolutely shredded to pieces by the skin of this shark. Shark skin is pretty amazing and it's designed perfectly to reduce drag during swimming. Their skin is made up of lots of dermal denticles, literally translating to skin teeth. These dermal denticles are made up of thousands of tiny placoid scales, which look a little something like this. Now, these placoid scales are all going to be pointing in one direction down the shark and that helps to reduce drag. However, if you were to rub your hand one way down the shark, it would feel incredibly smooth. But rubbing your hand the other way down the shark, it's going to feel like sandpaper, which easily cuts human skin. A little fun Easter egg here though, this number plate that's being pulled from the teeth of the tiger shark is actually the same Louisiana number plate that Hooper pulls from the stomach of the tiger shark from Jaws. Bit of useless information there for you. <laughs> so what exactly does a shark wrangler do? <laughs> Sam J using the term shark wrangler here is great. I'm not 100% sure what a shark wrangler is and I'm pretty sure that's not a real job title. Although there's probably a few frat boy fishers out there that like to refer to themselves as a shark wrangler. <laughs> Dinner time now as the Mako tiger shark cross is getting plonked into the pen where they're keeping the genetically modified actual Mako sharks. Now as scientists we don't feed live sharks to other sharks. Ethically, we just wouldn't get permission to do this. But I can tell you that sharks do eat other shark species in the wild. Shark cannibalism isn't just restricted out to open water and it can actually happen between siblings inside the womb of pregnant female sharks. Brutal, I know. Shark wrangler Carter here attempting to tranquilize one of the Makos as they have a right good go at trying to chomp through a titanium mesh cage. He's pointing the gun at them and... <laughs> oh no. They're swimming backwards. <laughs> oh, deep blue sea. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> so physiologically, sharks cannot swim backwards. It's just not possible for them to do based on how their bodies and fins are designed for swimming. This is shocking from a shark behavior perspective. <laughs> These are CGI sharks. It would have been so easy for them to just make them turn around and swim away like a normal shark would. <laughs> Okay, so the director's slightly redeeming themselves here by getting an anatomically correct female shark. And we can tell that because of the absence of any claspers. 
You're only slightly redeemed though, directors. Slightly. Big Mako shark here that's been raised out of the water for some lab experiments. We don't usually take sharks out of the water, but there is an organization known as Osearch that kind of does this with great whites. Shark Wrangler rubbing his hands the wrong way down the shark again here. Definitely cutting those hands in the process. Or not, in this case. <laughs> Now, back when this movie was made, sharks weren't really being used to help find a cure for Alzheimer's disease, which is the overall plot for this film. Although in recent years, a biotech company has been using shark antibodies to help find a treatment for Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. That research is really in its infancy though, but it's still pretty cool that nearly 20 years after the creation of the film, this research is actually being done now. The way they've restrained this shark is real bad news. Those straps over the back are really doing nothing. We restrain the tail mainly when working up a shark, as that's the strongest appendage they have. <laughs> and there we go, bootstrap Bill loses his arm because of it. They've actually really nailed the Mako shark teeth though on that shark. They're almost identical to what a real Mako would look like. And you really do get a decent view of all those brilliant rows of teeth. Scientifically accurate as well, great. I remember as a kid this scene being so scary, but it's actually so ridiculous. So Bootstrap Bill's oxygen mask is not designed to be underwater, so he shouldn't really be conscious right now. Then the shark defies all laws of physics by comfortably yeeting that bed through the water. And I'm pretty sure that's just not how water works. Have you ever tried throwing something underwater? And then finally, he cracks the glass that's supposed to be designed to withstand serious amounts of underwater pressure. <laughs> so much bad science going on here. <laughs> LL Cool J here, who I have to say is easily the best part about this entire film, is managing to outswim one of the fastest fish species over short distances on this planet. <laughs> the Mako shark is thought to be the fastest swimming shark species and one of the fastest fish in the sea, reaching top speeds of 45 miles per hour. That's 74 kilometers per hour for our American friends. LL Cool J really having a torrid time here, hiding inside an oven from this angry Mako shark. <laughs> She's turned the oven on. Uh, has she done this by accident? Or has her genetically modified brain given her the ability to understand the inner workings of industrial kitchen equipment? I guess we'll never know. <laughs> We've got another shot of the shark somehow swimming backwards here lining up a final strike to get into the oven and consume her nearly cooked food. Come on guys, one backward swim was bad enough, but two, <laughs> and then a cool explosion scene, because explosions are cool, I guess. <laughs> no shark science here, but I think it would be criminal of me not to include probably one of the funniest shark attack scenes of all shark movies. So let's just sit back and enjoy this together. We're going to pull together and we're gonna find a way to get out of here. First, we're gonna seal off this <laughs> It never gets old. <laughs> so we join this scene mid breath hold here and they really have been holding their breath for a very long time as they try and move some heavy underwater objects and get this machine switched back on. And oh no. <laughs> Here comes Queen Mako Shark to take out yet another character. <laughs> From a shark science perspective though, I'm not quite sure this is how a Mako Shark would be feeding on a normal prey item. You can see here, she's vigorously shaking her head from side to side to rip this guy in half, but Mako Shark teeth just aren't designed to do this. Their teeth are fairly elongated and point slightly backwards into their mouths. These teeth are designed for hooking onto prey species like fish and grasping them into their mouths. The head shaking she does here is more indicative of what a tiger shark or a great white might be doing as their teeth are serrated and are designed for sawing off bits of flesh from larger prey items. Here you can see a pretty good comparison of the non-serrated teeth of a mako shark and then the serrated teeth that's found in tiger sharks. To be fair, I have seen some videos online of Makos doing a kind of body shake while chomping down on a larger fishy prey item. But again, this isn't really for soaring flesh. They're attempting to use those pointed teeth to literally pull the flesh outwards instead of cutting it into small pieces. 
So we've just seen the clip of the Mako shark ripping that guy in half, but LL Cool J here seems to be doing just fine inside the mouth of the Queen Mako. <laughs> I'm really not sure how his legs aren't being bitten off here based on what we've just seen. He is, however, doing what you should be doing if you are being bitten by a shark, which is attacking the sensitive areas of the shark, for example, the eye, with whatever you have to hand. A crucifix, in this case. <laughs> Morally questionable chief scientist here deciding to sacrifice herself to stop the Queen Mako from escaping out into the open ocean. And we've again got some terrible shark physiology. <laughs> this shark has decided to stay completely still mid-water, before deciding to chomp down on her. <laughs> we did clarify in our last movie commentary that sharks can't just remain stationary mid-water, as this particular shark species needs to continually move forwards to push water across its gills. Extra points in the comments section if you can remember what that breathing technique is called. Final scene of the film here as LL Cool J spear guns the shark and then blows it up with a long cable and battery. <laughs> We've got a blatant rip-off of Jaws here, though, with the shark scattered into a million pieces. <laughs> that wasn't even a subtle rip-off. <laughs> shark Wrangler survives the giant explosion, somehow. And there we have our final two surviving characters from Deep Blue Sea, as they kick back and relax before having to explain what the hell has just gone down to the weekly workers who are on their way back to the research station. <laughs> I quit this job. And there we have it, folks. That was Deep Blue Sea. Now, I'm going to start by saying that Deep Blue Sea, although not on the same level as Jaws, is 100% in my top three favourite shark films of all time. It is really cheesy in parts, but I think that's what makes it great. It's also so quotable, and I actually rate the fact that most of the main characters die off, and perhaps those characters aren't the characters that you might expect to be killed off, which is pretty cool. So, for the ratings then. Realism score, unfortunately, has to be a little bit low for me. Sadly, there are some shocking shark physiology things they get wrong. That tiger shark at the beginning was awful, and then the shark swimming backwards. I just can't let that slide. <laughs> They do get a few things right though, from shark cannibalism to that pretty accurate looking animatronic Mako shark. So I think for realism, I'm gonna give it five out of 10. And then for overall entertainment, I really, really do enjoy this film and I can watch it again and again with friends and get enjoyment from it every single time. So for that, I'm gonna give it a solid eight out of 10. So what do you think of my ratings for Deep Blue Sea? Do you agree with them? Do you strongly disagree with them? I wanna know exactly what you think in the comments below. Also, let me know what shark films that you want to see movie commentaries for on Shark Bites, and I will definitely add them to the list. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel below, where you can stay up to date with all of our latest episodes. As I leave you with this very 90s LL Cool J shark rap, see you next time. Man made terror, hungry jaws of death. Paddle cross my depths, I'll pause your breath. I caught you, you sink down 40,000 leagues. Bleeding to death with no arm.